is hips, hamstrings, and lower back. My name is Jen, and there'll be a 45 minute class. This is Mr. Lee. You'll be making a, a guest appearance throughout the class. Um, you'll want to have two blocks and a strap. Uh, maybe a cushion or a blanket could be nice. Um, so any props that you have, just gather them up, have them handy, and we'll start in a seated position, maybe sitting on a blanket or bolster block. You can sit on your knees or your legs folded like I am in Sukhasana. And just take a few rolls with the shoulders up, back, and down. Nice deep inhale through the nose. And exhale, sigh. Two more like that. Deep breath in through the nose. Audible exhale out through the mouth. Feel the shoulders drop down. One more time, inhale, shoulders up towards your ears. And exhale, relax them down. You can close your lips, take a deep breath in through the nose. With the lips closed, sigh out through the nose. Ujjayi pranayam, in and out of the nose. Drawing palms together in front of your heart. We'll take a deep breath in. Sound of Om. Om. You can open your eyes, bring your attention back into the room. Great. And make your way onto hands and knees. So come on to all fours. Come on to all fours, hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, and we'll do a little cat and cow just to warm up the spine. So open up the front of the body with the tailbone, chest, chest and chin, arching the back, and then stretch the back body, tucking the tailbone under and rounding the spine. Gaze inward. And just go in between those two places, arching and rounding, Inhaling and exhaling. And moving with your breath. So extending the length of your breath in and out of the nose. One more moment. And then coming back to center. So grab your strap if you have one. You could also use a, a towel or any kind of tie. Lay down on your back. Place your feet on the floor and you can place the strap to the side for now. Reach your arms out to the side like a T. Widen your feet so they're as wide as the mat distance apart and begin to rock your knees from side to side. The knees are rocking from side to side and draw the attention to your hips. You can start to feel the internal and external rotation of your hips. And then let the knees fall to one side. So if your knees are going to the right, you might look over to the left, look in the opposite direction. And then just breathe into your belly. So inhale, Feel the abdominals expand like a balloon, filling up. And as you exhale, empty out, navel to spine. One more, deep breath in. And long breath out. Just take it up through center to go over to the other side. So knees go to the left. If it's comfortable, you can turn your head to the right. And then breathe into that abdominal region like a balloon. The belly fills up on the inhale, expand with the breath, drawing in oxygen. 
And as you exhale, empty out navel to spine, sending away carbon dioxide. Take another moment here. And come back to your center, feet on the floor. And bring your feet hip distance apart. Draw the right knee in towards your chest. You can interlace fingers on top of your right knee and just hug the knee in. Nice deep breath, draw the shoulder blades down your back so you can feel the collarbones widening. And then hold underneath your right thigh and extend the right leg up towards the ceiling. Start to circle the right ankle. Nice circles, full 360. Try to smooth it out. And then change directions and go the other way. Point and flex. Point and really articulate as you do this. Flex, moving through the whole journey of the foot. Point and flex. And keep your foot flexed. Go ahead and grab your strap and loop the strap over the ball of your right foot. And keep pressing your heel up towards the ceiling. You can hold either end of the strap here. And see if you can feel the natural curve in your lumbar spine. So you're not pressing the lower back to the floor. There's a, a natural little space there, as well as underneath the neck, where you want to keep the natural curve of your cervical spine, so the chin might be slightly lifted. And take one more deep breath into the back of your hamstring. And so the lower body asana, or the lower body poses, are focused on opening up the legs and the hips, which is going to release the lower back. If you have any kind of chronic lower back pain, this can be really great for that. One more breath. And switch the strap into your right hand, so both ends of the strap are in the right hand. And place the left hand on your left hip. Allow the right leg to open up to the right side, and you can let, let the left knee open up to the left side. The legs are opening here. Try to keep your left side grounded, the left shoulder and the hip down. You can even look to the left, that helps as well. And you can feel this stretch anywhere along the leg, like the inner thigh or the groin. Give yourself another moment to breathe, and as you're breathing, you're moving the awareness through your body. Maybe to places that you don't normally think about, like your hands or your feet, toes and fingers. And then slowly bring your leg back up to center, bring your left knee up to center. And just switch the strap over into your left hand. You can reach the right arm out to the right side. And allow the right leg to cross the body. Internally rotate your right leg about 45 degrees as well. So you're internally rotating and crossing the body. As you do that, let your left knee cross as well to the left, to the right. So you're kind of crisscrossing your legs. And bringing that really good stretch in the IT band. So keep Pressing through your pinky toe side of the foot as well as the big toe side. So you're flexing the no floppy feet, right? The leg is engaged, the foot is engaged. And that way you have stability so that you can start to open up in the stretch. See if you can press your right hip down to the mat even more. That might make it a little deeper, a little different sensation. And take one more breath. And come back up through center. And you can hold either end of the strap. To switch to the other side, lift your left foot up and place the ball of the left foot in the strap. And then bring your right leg down. 
and holding either end of the strap with the left leg extended. See if you can press evenly through the big toe ball mound and the pinky toe side. And that natural curve in the lower back as well as the cervical spine. Shoulder blades drawing down the back. And the collarbones are spreading wide away from your sternum. The strap is a really great tool to use here so you don't overcompensate for the stretch in the back of the leg by pulling with your shoulders and your arms. So really give yourself the right amount of uh, slack so that you can feel this in the back of the leg. You're not um, going too far, over efforting, and kind of missing the alignment and the real work of it. So create that stability. And then with the stability, you start to hug in and go deeper. Take the strap into your left hand, right hand on right hip, and allow the legs to open, left leg to the left, right knee to the right. And I'm looking over the right shoulder, a little prop of the wall here. <laughs> See if you can get your leg as open as you can. You might even be able to get your toes down to the floor. You're feeling really open in that groin and hip area. Finding your edge to so that place that hurts really good. And if it's painful, we back off, but if it's some sensation, just try to stay with it. Welcome it in, creating stability by grounding the right shoulder and the right hip down. And then more opening by relaxing into the stretch. One more moment here. And slowly come back up through center. Parallel the legs. <clears throat> can gaze up and switch the strap into your right hand. Reach the left arm out to the side. So you're grounding the left shoulder now. And the legs kind of crisscross the midline. So internally rotate the left toes, left thigh as it crosses. And then let the right knee go to the left. You can look to the left and then your left hip, see if you can pull that down towards the floor. How does that change any sensation in your body, creating that stability and grounding through the left hip? And then the stretch as you let the leg cross. One more moment here, just to move your awareness through the body with the breath. Coming back up through center. You can hold on to either end of the strap, bend your left knee, and just place the strap to the side. Extend your legs out. Take a moment to notice how you're feeling. And then bend the right knee in. You can keep the left leg extended or you can also bend the left knee and place it on the floor, whatever feels better here. Half happy baby. So ex first extend the right leg up towards the sky, flex the right foot, and then grab onto the back of the right knee. You can hug the right knee in towards your right armpit. So it's a little bit to the side of the rib cage, so you have space there to hug the knee in. You can keep holding the back of the knee, or you could also hold on to the ankle or the foot. Um, some people like to use a strap here as well. You can use a strap on the foot to hug it in. So the knee is drawing in towards your armpit and the foot is like it's standing on the ceiling. You're lengthening your tailbone down to the floor, lengthening the spine on the mat. Keep pressing through a flexed foot. Pressing through the ball of the right toes. We'll take a deep breath here. You can like, feel the stretch anywhere in your hip. We have a lot of muscles in the hip area that make this tight, which is why a lot of people end up experiencing some kind of low back pain because the hamstrings, the hips, the quadriceps can be really tight, especially if you're sitting all day, doing habitual movements that 
make this area of the body tight. Sitting, you're basically in a, in a forward fold so that can really uh, tighten up your, your hamstrings and low back. And just depending on what you did the day before, you might be feeling more open or more tight. So it really, it really depends. Give yourself one more breath on this side. And then release by stretching your legs out long. Notice how you feel and take a breath. Bending the left knee and hug the left knee and we're gonna take the other side, half happy baby, extend the left leg up, flex the foot, and then bend the knee. You can hug the knee in towards your armpit. I like to bring right hand to right hip and just match whatever you did on the first side. You might grab the back of the knee, ankle, foot. So there's many different progressions that you could use to get into this pose, right? I really love like just kind of looping the elbow around the back of the knee. Strap always makes things more accessible because it adds a little bit of length. So you can play around with it. Let it be just right for you and your body today. Every day is different. Every person is different. And that's really what the yoga practice is about, just kind of finding your own pathway, your own way that works. One more deep breath. If you can lengthen your spine, open up through those tight areas of the hips. And then when you're ready to slowly let that go, notice how you feel here. And bend your knees, place the feet on the floor so that they're hip distance apart, arms down by your side. Hold the outer edges of the mat Take a full breath in, rip the mat apart as you lift your hips up. So this action of ripping the mat apart is going to help you to use your arms. We're just stretching out the front body, stretching out the quadriceps, the hips, feel your knees and thighs hugging in towards each other. One more inhale and take your time slowly lower, upper, middle, lower back and hug the knees in towards your chest place the hands on your kneecaps and begin to circle your knees in one direction as you do this you can feel a uh, massaging of your sacrum on the mat it should feel good see if you can make your way all the way around the circle hitting each point of the clock and you can do this with your breath, inhaling and exhaling. So it's become like its own little moving meditation. And then when you're ready, you can change directions and go the other way. Nice deep breaths in and out of the nose. Always come back to your breath. That's your focus. And then reach the legs up overhead and just shake your legs out, right? Like you're a toddler having a tantrum. Just shake your feet and shake your legs. Take another deep breath in and a long breath out. Great. Roll your way up to sit. Place the hands behind you, take your feet wide again, and rock the knees from side to side. It's a little familiar move, our internal and external rotation of the thighs. Okay, so it's also like a nice little butt massage, sitting, especially if your hips are sore, that can feel really good to kind of just massage it out on the floor. Knees go to the right, just take a gentle twist, sit up really tall. And twist over your right shoulder. You can bring uh, left hand to either knee, whatever feels good here. Grow tall on the inhale and gentle twist as you exhale. One more deep breath. And 
then unwind and go to the other side, knees over to the left. Use your left hand to lengthen your spine, sit up tall, inhale. And then the twist comes from your abdominals, your shoulders, your chest, your head. Grow taller on the inhale, so you're really using the energy of your breath. Twisting as you exhale. One more moment. And then coming back through center. Place your feet on the floor, hip distance apart. Hands are underneath the shoulders behind you. Take a full breath in. Reverse tabletop. So you're gonna lift your hips up. Really great stretch for the shoulders and the chest. So open up your heart space. You can either keep your chin tucked or you can drop your head back, whatever feels okay here. One more, full breath in. And a long breath out. And lower your hips back down. Take the right ankle, cross it over the left knee. Take your four position. So notice that my right foot is really flexed. I'm gonna keep that active, no floppy foot. And just rock from side to side here. Little micro movements, kind of like one of my favorite things is to move and breathe with little um, exploration of movement into whatever feels tight or tense. So notice how your right hip feels. And then extend the left leg out long. We're gonna rock the baby. So you're gonna cradle your right shin. I'm putting the right foot in the crook of my left elbow. My right elbow wraps around the right knee and you can interlace your fingers here or you might even wanna just forklift the leg up. Try not to round your spine, but rather lift your chest up. So you're thinking right shin towards your chest and you can rock your baby here, right? Maybe from side to side, or you can even do circles. Bring it out and in, little micro movements. Another moment to explore. And take your right heel and stack it on top of the left toes. Sit up really tall here. Inhale. And then fold forward. Oh, going into the hamstrings. Take a deep breath. Hold on to your right ankle, shin, foot, and bring the right leg up with you. Sort of bend in the knee if you need to. But keep lifting your chest up, so no sinking. Lift the chest. Again, you can use a strap here so you're not like overdoing it in your shoulders or your upper back. And take a deep breath. Nice, let that go. You can extend the legs out, shake it out. Whew. Okay, bend the knees, place your feet on the floor. Cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Keep flexing through that left heel and rock from side to side. Nice. One hip is gonna be different than the other. Usually one is gonna be tighter than the other. We just have those imbalances. So our practice brings a little bit more awareness to that so that we can correct those imbalances. Because right? over time, that can maybe create some problems. I want to feel open on both sides, easeful and strong. Extend the right leg out in front of you. You can cradle your left shin. So putting the left foot in the right elbow. Lift your chest up, little micro movements around. So many different muscles in the hips here that could be contributing to the tightness. Uh, lots of fascial adhesions, so um, you might even be able to kind of find the tight spot as you rock around on your hip, and kind of compress it into the floor. One more moment. 
sometimes the floor is like the best foam roller. Just your body against the ground can be really intense, but also good to open up those kind of tight places. So left heel on top of the right toes. Maybe use your strap, maybe you grab the ankle. I'll start by lifting tall through the side body, so tailbone back behind you, high on the sitting bones, and fold forward. And breathe into the back of the legs. The hamstrings like to be stretched. Holding onto your left leg or strap, lift yourself up. Rajasana variation, keep lifting your chest, relaxing the shoulder blades down the back, not overstrain there, deep breath. And then let that go, hands behind you, just shake out the legs. And just noticing how your legs feel, give yourself a moment to integrate. Bend the knees, feet on the floor. Soles of the feet together, knees apart. Sit up tall here for Baddha And this variation will take the feet a little further away from you. So it's more of a diamond shape. You may want to have a, a box or a prop nearby, possibly. Um, the prop would go on your feet and you can hold on to your ankles, slowly folding forward. And, and you might just even fold here Right, or you can stack up the blocks or place a cushion or some blankets so you can fold forward and rest your head on the blocks. And that gives your head a little something to release into so you can really let go in the back of the neck, the whole back body, feeling the support of the floor. <clears throat> and then to help relax into this shape, we'll breathe deeply, take a full inhale. Exhale, empty out all the air. Then inhale for a count of four, three, two, one. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale, four, three, two, one, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Keep that going, inhaling for four, just counting mentally to yourself, exhaling for six. This will activate the parasympathetic nervous system, that relaxation response, that rest and digest mode, so that your body feels safe to let go a little bit more. And with your hands, you can slowly come back up. Awesome. Bring yourself back into the space, move the strap or the prop to the side, lean back and straighten your legs. And again, integrate by noticing how you feel, kind of afterglow of the shape, the after experience of body tanasana. And bend your knees, swing the legs around, and come to lay down on your belly. Sphinx pose with the forearms on the mat. Pulling your heart through, draw the shoulder blades back and down, and look over the right shoulder, center, look over the left, center, and lower yourself down. Hands wider than the mat, distance apart. Wide cobra, so rising up. And then salamander pose. Bend the right knee and then twist to the right. Extend through a straight left leg, flex the left foot. You can always come down onto your left forearm here if you need to be a little bit lower. 
and draw your left side body towards the mat. Reach your heart forward and stretch your left leg back. So you're getting this really big stretch on the left side body, the quadratus lumborum, as well as your psoas muscle. And you can kind of wiggle around here in your salamander. One more deep breath, pulling the ribs away from your hips, kind of traction in your spine. Move your shoulders in that twist. Releasing any tension there. Coming back through center and lowering down. And then lift back up wide, Cobra. We'll take it to the other side. So bend the left knee, roll onto the right hip. Flex the right foot, press through your right heel. Extending that right leg. And then drawing my right side body towards the mat, lengthening that right leg back, twisting to the left, maybe wiggling around here. Yeah, it should hurt really good. Get that stretch on the right side. One more moment. And then coming back through center and lowering down. Make a little pillow with your hands to rest the forehead. Just rock the hips from side to side. Coming up onto your forearms. Turn your left forearm parallel to the top of the mat and bend your right knee. Reach back with your right hand and grab onto the top of the right foot. If that's not available, you can also use a strap here so that you're not crunching in the lower back, right? There should be no um, crunching sensation, no pain there, but you should be feeling a little bit of a twist in the upper body and start to draw your right heel towards your glute. And then square off your shoulders towards the top of the mat. You can even spin your right fingertips forward if you have that extra shoulder mobility. But as you start to square your hips and shoulders to the top of the mat, that's gonna intensify the quad stretch. Press your right hip down into the floor. And feel that grounding. And press your right knee down into the floor and isometrically drag your right knee towards the top of the mat. Keep pulling the right heel in towards your glute and try not to collapse in that left shoulder. Keep lifting up out of your left shoulder. One more breath. And then let that go. Woo. We'll take it to the other side. So right forearm parallel to the top of the mat, bend the left knee, reach back with the left hand. I'm grabbing the big toe side of the foot. Pull the heel in towards your glute. Use the strap if you need, find your depth in the stretch. Maybe you spin the left fingertips forward if you're going for that little flip of the grip. Don't sink into the right shoulder. Keep lifting up, left heel drawing in, squaring off towards the front of the mat. So left hip down, left shoulder forward. And then press the left thigh, the left knee down into the top of the mat and drag it forward while you keep that left heel drawing in. Stabilize and then go deeper. Take another breath here. And slowly release. Come to lay down on your belly. Reach your arms out in front of you. Extending long from fingertips to toes. Lengthen your right leg and lift it up. Reach through your left arm. Lift up through your left arm. So opposite, you're reaching left arm and right leg. And you wanna lengthen them away from each other. So you're stretching your spine, lengthening out the low back. One more inhale. Exhale, release. Left leg lifts, right arm lifts. Crossing. And keep reaching, grow longer, strengthening the back body. Inhale, release as you exhale. Place hands underneath your shoulders and press up into a tabletop position. 
Bring the big toes together and knees apart. We're going to very slowly go into a child's pose. First start by rocking your shoulders forward and then exhale, send the hips back, maybe just like halfway or a third of the way and then inhale, come forward. Exhale, send the hips slightly back. You can even rock from side to side and continue at your own pace going forward and back, slowly moving your way into that balasana or child's pose. There's no rush to get there, right? You just wanna take your time, let your body open as you come into it. And then over the next three breaths or so, maybe making your way into the fullest expression, sending the hips down and back, resting your head on the floor or on a block. You can also use a cushion Anything you need at the ground should feel a little closer to you so that you can relax. Take a deep breath here. And then come back up into your tabletop position. You can bring your knees together and step the right foot forward in between your hands. Low lunge, left hand down, right hand on right knee twist to the right. Feel like your left hip is drawing back, so you're creating that stability, and then twist to the right. Right shoulder goes back, head goes back, another deep breath, and let that go. Bring your right hand down to the mat or block, curl the back toes under and lift the back knee, pop the back foot in about two or three inches, so that you're grounding through the back heel for pyramid stretch. Fold forward over the leg. This is an intense stretch for the entire back body. Nice full breaths in and out of the nose. And try to lengthen your exhale as a way to relax and some of the experience of the shape. Okay, and then we'll meet in downward facing dog. Down dog is a nice stretch for the hamstrings, the calves. Step the left foot forward in between your hands. Drop the back knee down. Right hand down, left hand to left knee, and twist to the left. Draw your right hip back as you twist to the left. Letting your left shoulder go back, your head go back. One more breath. And come back through center, left hand down to the mat. Curl the back toes under, lift the back knee. And hop the back foot in a few inches for your pyramid pose. Or make sure your feet are wide enough that it's comfortable. I like to think of having my feet kind of like on railroad tracks. Grounding through the back heel. You can always bend the front knee a little bit if you need to, but it's moving towards straight. And again, you can straighten the leg and even have your hands on blocks if it feels intense. It is called the intense western side stretch. Um, western side meaning the, the back side of the body because we would uh, practice yoga facing the eastern rising sun to do our sun salutations. Take one more breath. Beautiful. Come back into downward facing dog. Okay. And then roll forward into plank pose. Slowly lower into chaturanga. And press back up. Two more like that, chaturanga. Press back up and chaturanga and hold, 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 lower all the way down to the mat. Cobra pose, inhale, and downward facing dog, exhale. Step the right foot forward in between your hands, drop the back knee down. And you can grab your blocks here, 
Start to send your hips back into Ardha Hanumanasana. It's our monkey stretch. Fold forward over the leg. Deep breath. And lift your chest, breathe in. Rebend the front knee, shift forward. Take the blocks to the inside of your right foot and then lower your elbows down to the blocks or to the floor, whatever you can do here. Curl the back toes under and lift the back knee. And you can just shift forward and back. Feel your uh, left hip dropping to the floor. Keep pressing back through the ball of the left big toe ball mound. Drawing the right hip back in space. Nice. And then drop the back knee down. Place the hands underneath your shoulders and lift back up. And then send your hips back again into your runner stretch or that half monkey pose. So we're gonna keep our hands on the inside of the right leg today and do more of like a, a funky monkey or a funky split. So your right leg is gonna go out to the right side. And you might have something to, to slide it on, right? And you have the blocks here to support you. So allow that leg to go out into a place that feels good for you today. So you can come into your stretch. You might um, want to support yourself with a block underneath your sitting bone or thigh, or you might feel good um, with the block underneath your hand. So go to that place where you feel a stretch today. It's going to be a big stretch for the back leg as well as the front leg, but with the right leg, front leg going out to the right side, you have a little bit more openness in your hips, so maybe you can go a little deeper. It might be a little different for you. Right, and you can walk your hands over to the left and widen your right hip, right thigh. Then you can walk your hands over to the left, lean to the left, or, and widen your right thigh. Deep breath. And come back through center. Take your time coming out of this. We're gonna meet up in downward facing dog. And just release, notice how you feel in that down dog. Step the left foot forward in between your hands, drop the back knee down. Hands to the blocks, send your hips back into Ardha Hanumanasana, just the classic version, and fold forward. And then lift your chest up. Re-bend the front knee and take the blocks into the inside of your left foot. Lower your forearms down to blocks or to the mat. Curl the back toes under, lift the back knee. That makes it a little more intense and you can rock forward and back, forward and back. Keep pressing into that back heel, drawing the left hip back, letting the right hip drop down. One more breath. Drop the back knee, hands underneath your shoulders, lift up. Keep the hands on the inside of the left foot for our funky monkey today. Send your hips back, beautiful. And then slowly, it helps if your um, left heel is on something slippery. Sometimes I even put like a towel underneath the heel. And let your left leg slide out on the diagonal to the left side, right? So you're a little bit more wide open in your, um, in your split, kind of going on the diagonal. Use the blocks however you need to here. And then you have those little therapeutic moves. If you want to lean to the right and widen out the left thigh. And then lean to the left and widen out the right thigh. Hurts so good. Funky monkey pose. Give yourself one more moment here. Great. And then when you're ready to come out, you can come out and make your way into a final child's pose. Hips to heels, resting the forehead down. 
And you can inhale for a count of four, three, two, one. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Keep that going. Inhaling for four and exhaling for four. And then roll your way up. Okay, final pose for our Shavasana. You'll need a, a prop, whether it's a block, a folded blanket, or a cushion. Come into bridge position, bridge set up with the knees bent, feet on the floor. Lift your hips up, slide the prop underneath your lower back, right underneath your sacrum. And allow your hips to rest on the block. You can reach your arms out to the side or any way that's comfortable. Stay here and breathe. Or you have the option to extend the legs. And relax into the floor. You want to trust with the prop that you've chosen. And the floor is there to support you rising up to meet you so that your body can totally soften into that support. Relaxing the muscles of your face. You can release all expression. Relaxing the tongue at the bottom of the mouth, releasing the jaw. Relaxing the throat, the neck, the head be heavy. And just observing the breath naturally, moving in and out. You don't have to control your breath. Just notice. Taking in any sounds around you. If your legs are extended, you can slowly bend the knees, placing feet on the floor. And when you're ready, lift the hips and move your prop out of the way. Allow the hips to come down. And then slightly widen your feet and allow the knees to knock in towards each other. Constructive rest. One hand over the heart, one hand over the belly. Take a deep breath into the belly, ribs, and chest. And exhale out from the chest, ribs, and belly. Slowly roll over onto one side. And when you're ready, make your way up to a seated position. Once you're seated, lengthen the spine, and draw palms together. And just take a moment to bow inwardly towards yourself. Every time you step on the mat, is an opportunity to honor your own dedication to the practice, to yourself, for showing up today. And we'll close with the vibration of one ohm. Take a deep inhale. 